the soap is inspired by a video by Marie Nadeau, who makes really beautiful soaps. I'll put a link to that video uh, below. Um, it resembles my hurricane swirl, except that rather than swirling the entire slab mold with one big spiral, each individual bar is spiraled. And I think I'm going to like that in this soap. Here's my recipe done on soapcalc.net. It is castor oil, coconut oil, uh, lard, and some high oleic sunflower oil. As I've mentioned in other videos, I really like the high oleic sunflower oil. It's almost completely colorless, so you can make a really white layer of soap with it. And compared to olive oil, it actually has a little more oleic acid than the olive does, so it's a very high quality uh, oil. And then I like the uh, lard because it will trace very slowly. So this should be a good slow moving recipe. And I'm using uh, uh, some sodium lactate to uh, harden the soap and make it come out of the mold a little easier. My colors in this soap are winter white mica from Nurture Soap, some activated charcoal to give black, uh, Klein blue mica for a deep bright blue, uh, mimosa yellow for a very bright yellow, and those are all from Nurture Soap. And then from Rustic Essentials, I'm using Bordeaux mica for a, a deep whiny looking red. So I have five colors. For fragrance, I'm using Essential Depot's sandalwood fragrance oil. I have never used it before. I've, I've used Indian sandalwood from Nature's Garden, which I like a lot, um, but I've read good things about this one. And now that I smell it, I think it smells a little more like natural sandalwood. I have a sandalwood box that I bought many years ago in India, and this smell really reminds me of it. I'm using a Crafter's Choice 12 bar rectangular slab mold for this recipe. And because once you start adding soap, you can't really see the um, little lines on the bottom that show where the bars will be divided, I've taken a Sharpie marker and put marks around the top so I can keep track of where the individual bars are when it comes time to swirl. I'm not going to show the mixing of the batters because I've got that in a lot of other videos. Um, I'm just going to pour from here. So I'm going to uh, just pour some back and forth lengthways swipes with each color. In this case, I'm not paying too much attention to where the individual bars are going to be. This batter is still pretty thin. It's just barely a trace.
This is thickening up noticeably now. So on this cycle, I'm pouring almost all of it. I'm going to save a little to not kind of neaten up the top, but I really am using up most of it on this round. And I'm still pouring relatively deep on that last round. I'll get much closer with the pitcher and hopefully not have it sink in much, if at all. This is the last round. I think with the red and the white to finish, I'm not going to do them lengthways, I'm going to do them at more of an angle, just to be sure all the colors do show up on the surface at the end. And I think every color should be showing on every bar also at the end. So I really don't know the best way to swirl this. This is going to be kind of an experiment. I think I'm going to start on this side as if it were a standard drop swirl and do some uh, cross swipes. One thing I don't like about this mold is those little bumps on the bottom that show where the bars are catch your stick if you're um, trying to um, swirl all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to stop this at that edge. So I'm going to have a group of bars that have been cross-swiped and a group that have not. So now I'm going to do the spirals on a per bar basis. wiping my stick between bars. Maybe I should, but I seem to be getting away without doing that.
On the other hand, those little bumps in the bottom let you feel exactly where the edge of the bar is. So for these spiral swirls, I'm kind of liking that aspect of it. Okay, I'm going to call that done. Here is the newly poured and swirled soap. I think I'm liking that. Um, I will spray it with um, isopropyl alcohol, but I probably won't cover it with anything. For one thing, the mold is so full that I think if I put a cover over it, it would um, it, the cover would stick to the soap. I may put some uh, uh, plastic cling wrap over it, but other than that, I don't think I'll cover it. So it will cure at or near room temperature, at least overnight. The soap is about 20 hours old and I'm going to unmold it now. Here's the bottom surface that was against the floor of the mold. I think that turned out quite pretty, maybe better than the tops. In the case of this mold, the uh, what appear to be cut lines there are just grooves caused by the ridges in the bottom of the mold, so I'll actually have to cut these apart now with a knife. Here's a finished bar. That's a cut side. So is that. That was against the mold wall. There's another cut side. And the bottom side. These are obviously going to need some planing and beveling and otherwise cleaning up, but I think they're going to be pretty. that shade of blue that was against the mold wall. The, uh, the bars like this one that had the uh, crossways swipes done to them before the spiral have finer lines. I like that. I'm not sure I like it any better. Um, but I think it's fine. Like right in there, those little fine lines, that only happened on the bars where the cross swipes were made before they were spiraled. Well, that's interesting. This is another one of those that had the cross um, stripes, so right in there, that blue and white area, that's a, a good example of the finer lines that gave. Bottom side again. Here's a bar that I've shaved the top off of. I think I'm going to let the rest dry for a few more days before I try that and any of the others. But once you get that rough surface off, this, this is the top surface after it's been shaved. And I like that pattern a lot. I think I'll make this soap again at some point.